Barry McCarthy, Oakland, Common Loop Pass Grail here, wishing everybody involved in the European Fela every good luck with the event. Um, I hope everybody who is participating, all of the 10 teams, all their mentors, all their managers, have a great weekend in Berlin. The most important thing is everybody should have fun. I hope you can grow it from the 10 teams this year to many more in the next couple of years. A son, Common Loop Pass Grail, Garamina Mahabu. Uh, very well, welcome to this Sunday's game. I'm your host, Alan Moore, and we're continuing our journey around Europe and a nice special one, one that's actually a preview of a massive, massive event coming up this weekend. Of course, not too long ago on the podcast, we were speaking, uh, when we were podcasting, we were speaking with uh, Pierce in Van, uh, and he told us about the development, about how, you know, as GA Youth Officer, they're pushing things along and are really trying to make things happen. No, sorry, not just trying to make things happen, they are making things happen. And it has happened so well that this coming weekend will be the second GGE failure, European failure. Uh, so I'm going to go straight away to Van. Pierce, um, should I address you in French? Like say bonsoir? Well, on peut dire bonsoir. Yeah, okay. why not? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> now I get stuck for what to say next. But, um, Pierce, uh, first of all, I always ask this, how is the weather out in Van at the moment? Um, yeah, it's lashing, uh, tell you the truth. We, we could be in listening Varna there tonight instead of Van. It's chucking it down. But it's, that's, that's, is it kind of normal spring weather up, up in that part of France? Because, you know, it's, it's not like we'd say, like, down the south of France, where we like nice and sunny the whole lot. It, it's kind of more with a bit of Atlantic tinge. Yeah, well, we get the kind of Gulf Stream like we would in the west coast of Ireland. So we can... You know, you could have the four seasons in the day, you know. It's, um, at the moment, we're just going through winter, even though it's the second day of spring. <laughs> yeah, so, well, we here in Moscow, we just had the uh, snow starting to melt, but we're expecting more snow next week, so it's going to be lovely. Um, Piers, straight into the meat of it all, um, Berlin on Saturday, you've got the second failure coming up. Tell us about it. Tell us how many teams uh, are taking part and where is it going to happen and what time as well? So um, it's going to happen at the Olympic Stadium. We've just in the complex. Sinead Canavan from Berlin has done a fantastic job. Well, I don't know how she done it, but she got the stadium, which is um, which is well renowned. It's where Jesse Owens won his um, the Olympic medals. Um, in the 30s, Hitler wouldn't uh, shake his hand after it. France lost the World Cup in 2006 against Italy in the stadium. So hopefully we have better luck ourselves <laughs> than the French team. Um, we have nine, nine teams in total come from all over Europe, which is brilliant, you know. The last failure we had five, so to, co so to jump to nine, is remarkable, you know. Yeah, go ahead. It's gone, it's going to be throw in. There's going to be a little parade, I think, at nine o'clock, and then the first games are going to be thrown in at half nine. Uh, and so then it's going to go on through the day. I, we were discussing the, the last time, um, when we were chatting about the difficulties like getting players out and so on. How has it been to get the numbers, for example, for coming from around the continent? Because you're almost doubling the amount of teams than just last year. Yeah, well, um, like my predecessor, Una Shorthill, she done an awful lot of work establishing teams and getting contacts with different clubs and getting us all into a network, you know. So I just kind of come along this year and I've had an easy ride, tell you the truth. Una done a great job last year getting all the teams or all the responsibilities responsible sorry i'm going to french all the <laughs> all the responsible uh, leaders of the teams in in brussels for like a workshop workshop so that was great and it was easy then just kind of move on this year compared to last year whereas last year we were scraping the bottom of the barrel looking for teams tell you the truth but, uh, that, yeah go ahead so this year this year it's like fantastic to have nine teams and based based from like Spain, Switzerland, Germany, France. It's, that's fantastic, you know? Um, Pierce, in, in that, I mean, it's something that everybody talks about and everyone says, oh, it's the way forward. 
but not enough people are doing it now in all fairness and and, and i look at our own clubs in russia to a fair degree as well although symbiotic are doing great work with kids as well they're after setting up a youth section there just well a couple of months ago but it was actually in december they started um what needs to be done more by clubs and who, who should be responsible for it? Because if you say, oh, a youth officer, a youth officer is just a person, but you need a, a kind of a, a group. So what can be done, Pierce, in your experience? Yeah, there's a lot of things to be done. It depends on the club as well. Um, there's certain clubs like uh, Maastricht, which Tony Bass will always be alluding to, whereas you have students coming in and out, and they're not, they're not setting in proper foundations into the club that could be the same in some of the big towns like um, Wren, where it's a big student town in, in Brittany as well. So we need to just kind of build on youth, put youth front and centre. And it's hard, like it is a hard job and someone has to take on responsibility and give up their Saturday morning to train the kids or, or you know, deal with the parents. But it has to start somewhere. And it, it's the only way we can really develop Gaelic games on the continent. It, 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 as you say, I mean, just to even get a club going to get adults out in the field is a huge task. And, you know, it's difficult. And down in December when I was down with uh, Budapest and, you know, just to get a place to train is enough. Like, it's a struggle for them. And again, as students are running it, and the same as you said, the Maastricht, they've got like lots and lots of people. It's almost like a public service, but they have to build at a level to get people there and again it's a lot of towns as you said are very transitory you know they're just people are there for a year students are for a semester for a year and then they're gone um do you think that we we could go back to kind of the village level that maybe we need to reset large people around the continent like send them to small <laughs> small towns like van you know like uh, i don't know ulianos i say now start a kids section would that help is that maybe something we could think about doing uh and i'm, I'm been deadly serious that we could actually get people get a few quid to go settle in an area and start coaching. I think we're now a few years away from that. Yes, <laughs> if um, if the GGU want to set me into a different area in France, yeah, I'd give me a couple of pounds to buy, to buy a nice house down the south. I take <laughs> take the hand off them. But uh, now, look, I think we just need to get the right people on board. The right people doing. Um, right coaching involved uh people people who are comfortable with kids like i'm doing it now six years and the first three years i didn't enjoy it all like i was shouting at kids you know don't be kicking that there get the balls back you know whereas now like i've just kind of have the fun with them as well you know like if they if they're kicking balls off into nowhere you're not going to stop them you know <laughs> so you just got to, you got to just go with the flow and enjoy it and have a bit of crack with them. You know, that's, what, it's just putting smiles on faces, tell you the truth, you know, and then de develop it then that they've games, they've got decent level of games. Cool camps are great. Keep everyone involved, you know. That's, you know, again, it's something that I know just, just it took me having to say like with, with uh, Tony, because he said four years ago in Ireland, the World Games that, the European teams are going in. We're just going in to do their best and to hopefully win a couple of matches and try to proceed as best they could. And he said the most important thing was memories over medals or memories not medals. That seems to, that's what you're saying. It's like get them playing, get them enjoying the game, getting them fall, making them fall in love with the sport. Yeah, like you get them involved and you just have to crack with them. Like if, you know, you're not going to be getting them kicking 45s or knocking 65s over. You know, so you just you have to have fun with them. You know what I mean? And uh, teach teach the fundamental skills. Like I'd be big in the fundamental skills. Don't be skipping things. But it has to be done in a fun way. You know. And it's, I, 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 I'm actually you putting a smile on my face just even talking about that. That that's the way it should be done. Before I know I know you're, you're one of your lads with you there. But before I do, I just seen the St. Bridges cross over the door and the wooden. Um, uh, Jesus, what do you call it? What are the things, what are things that hold up the, the, the roof? Oh, oh the right? beans, yeah. The beans, gee, oh my God. See, I forget my own English. <laughs> you forget your <laughs> English. I forget my English. Did you, did you do all that yourself, Pierce? 
Yeah, so this is what an old stone house with all the stonework at the back. And um, it's an old band I renovated in 2010, I think. So, yeah, so I'm a joiner by trade, so it's second nature to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. So listen, so you're you're not there with your what what's it what's his name? Yeah. So you know. Hi, I'm Tomas. Tomas, how are you? Tomas, listen, um how are you enjoying Gaelic football? Like are you doing it just to please your dad or you're doing it because it's a good bit of crack? No, it's fun, I like it. Okay. <laughs> you're looking at dad very nervously there going, ah no, dad, I'm not gonna don't worry, I'm not gonna mess. Um so what, when, when you're you're training, what's the best part about training for you? Mm, I don't know. I just I like the matches at the end. When you get to put all the things that you learned dur during the training into place and see how it works and all that. And do you find it like, say, uh, you know, you're, you're going there because you like it and you, you're enjoying the crack of it. Do you find it some other, like, you know, lads and lasses, they're kind of just there because the mom and dad tell them to go there? No. no like, there's lots of people who just stop sports that they were doing before to come and see Ga, play Ga, and like it's not something that's really known in France, so they're here because they like it. It's to also, just in saying that, like, you know, the, would you have any idea, or I know you're, you're still relatively young, relatively young. Uh, would you have any thoughts that maybe you'd like to, to say, for example, go to study in Ireland to play any football there? Uh, maybe if I was good enough. I'd have to see. Okay. No, I mean, again. Yeah. It has to win a failure first. Oh, there you, you scholarship now. <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, Tomas, how, how cool is it with your dad coaching? That's fun. Uh, sometimes it's a bit annoying but I mean it's Hold better because then when you do mistakes or if you don't do the right things then he's there after training and tells you and you get to improve it after you get to go do extra training with him and so you get like extra, extra. To improve. Do, does he does he get annoyed when you say you're making mistakes does he get annoyed when you're making mistakes nah oh Pierce, sometimes he... sometimes sometimes <laughs> so yeah. We'll have to wait until now Saturday to see how annoyed I am or not. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, in, in, in just in talking about before um, before we finalize, finalize on, on on Saturday, um, Pearson Thomas, there's some great people. We, we played Larry McCarthy, but you've been getting great people to do little promo videos to promote it. How did you get that to come about, Pierce? Uh, yeah, Paul Mannion, I know now for a while, you know, so. He uh, knows his brother more so, so I just asked his brother, would he be able to help me out getting a few um, videos done and just get a bit cracking with the kids then go, oh, look here, you know what I mean? Listen, listen on that, I'm going to play the Paul Manning video and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up and I'll show the poster as well and we'll get the final details on Berlin. So just one second, just uh, Paul is here wishing the best to all the lads and lasses of the fair. Hey guys, uh, Paul Manning here. I wanted to send a quick video to all of you taking part in the Berlin Fela this weekend. And uh, to wish you all the very best of luck. It's a huge milestone in your underage career. And I've got very special memories of it myself as well. So um, do your best to prepare as well as you can. And uh, give it everything you have. And uh, don't forget to enjoy the day and the occasion as well, okay? All right, guys. Best luck. So you said to prepare for the occasion. How, how are you guys getting on, uh, Piers? How do you reckon you're going to go? Uh, uh, look... I think I've won already, you know, because like we've nine clubs, so I've already won. So it's just now about kids getting big game time. You can't train games, and uh, it's just going, just get kids, get a bit of crack, and it'd be competitive. And that's what we want. But we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully, we'll, hopefully we win it. There's a big, um, there's a, the fail at home then that's at stake. And that's going to be in the Connick Dome in Mayo. So that'd be brilliant, you know, to get Ooh. the kids playing there. But uh, so, yeah, so, but look, it's competitive football. That's what we want. I'd like to see this young fella get a county medal, you know. <laughs> There's a few of them in the house in uh, back in Dublin. I don't have any, but he's <laughs> have them. So if we, got, if we had one for Europe, it'd be great. So, yeah, it'd be fun. You know? Yeah, you have to start with one. You just have to start with one. So yeah. one, yeah. So, so yeah, so 
Go ahead, Chris. So, yeah, look, I'm not going to hold you on. We just have to get – we're training tonight, you know. <laughs> this is our last training session. Perfect. Isn't it very best look? Look, it's, again, Saturday. Uh, from what time again to start? So, uh, the first throw in, I think, will be about half nine. And anyone in who's in Berlin, please come down and see us. And you can support – me, you can support uh, Munich, yeah, Basel, Luxembourg, Den Haag, yeah, Belgium, Galicia. Just sit down to Berlin for sure. You know, we're going to be a great host. That is, that's all we need to hear. So, Pierce, listen, thanks a million. Tomas, you have fun and uh, do your best on Saturday. Yeah, well, do. And just good luck to all clubs, you know, and it's, I'm really proud to see it grown and um, everyone taking part in it, you know. Super. Listen, um, have a safe journey there, safe journey back, and have a great time while you're there, and well done, Pierce. All right, thanks a lot. Go on. Talk to you later, guys, on, yeah? Talk to you later. Go on, get your boots now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we will go away for this show. We will, of course, back next week with more of this Sunday's game in another part of Europe that we will be uh, visiting.